In this video and the next, we're going to move on to the writing process. I'll provide best practices that will help you deliver great copy consistently. Be sure that you've done all of your prep work that we discussed in video three. These best practices won't produce good copy on their own. It's important to note that these best practices should be thought of as guidelines and not rules. When you're writing for software, you're problem solving in real time for the user. You're trying to find the best copy for them. Generally, these guidelines will be used nearly every time. That's why they're called best practices. But there may be times when we need to try something different, and that's OK. However, only deviate from these guidelines when you have a very specific reason. Guideline one, be human. If you've watched the whole class, you've picked up on this by now. We're writing software for people. We have to eliminate computer language from our interface. But I want to provide you with a very specific example. The password process is the worst. We all get our passwords wrong from time to time. The majority of the time, you might see a message like, your password is invalid. Now, invalid is the definition of a computer word. People don't say it. Hey, Bob, your Hawaiian shirt, that's invalid. We just don't talk like that. So make your language human. Sorry, your username or password didn't work. Please try again. So look at the text you write. Scrub it for computer words. Invalid, access denied, error, submit, and so on. If it sounds like something the computer from your favorite sci-fi show would say, get rid of it. Replace it with natural language. Guideline number two, copy is a conversation. Let's talk about conversations. All software really does is take real world conversations and automate one side of it. Software is a conversation with the user through the interface. To accomplish a task, the software asks the user for information. The user then answers. Software listens and fulfills the request, returning what the user wants, a completed task. When you write copy, try to think of it as a dialogue. Make the automation, the software's part of the conversation, seem less automated and more of a natural exchange. Great software doesn't feel like a process for the user. It feels like a natural conversation. Guideline three, shorter is better, clear is best. It's the writer's job to make sure we convey any information or instruction as quickly and clearly as possible. As you probably already know, most users don't want to read lengthy explanations. They want to be done with their task as fast as possible. This is especially true as we continue to create more software for mobile devices. Most users don't even read. They just kind of skim, especially when they're on the go. So shorter is better. Now try to make your copy as brief as possible. Research tells us that the average person's ability to absorb a sentence and remember it drops off around eight words. After that, their recollection falters, and they don't necessarily remember everything that's being asked of them. I think that's a good guideline for instructional copy in particular. Keep it to eight words. But here's the important thing about this particular guideline. Shorter is better, clear is best. While it's good to keep the copy short, it's critical that your instructions are crystal clear. Leaving off a word or two for the sake of brevity can turn a specific request into a vague request. 
and lead to the user providing incorrect information. In fact, I can give you the perfect example from my personal experience. If you asked for my full name, first name, last name, I'd answer Bill Beard. But what if you actually needed my full legal name, William Robert Beard III? I know it's a bit of a mouthful. I'm not British royalty or anything, unfortunately. But it's two fields, one word of difference, and two drastically different answers. If you needed my full legal name, the first version would have gotten incorrect information. So shorter is better, but clear is best. Step back from your copy and make sure it's asking for exactly what you need. Guideline four, write for the user only. As software creators, we tend to work in organizations and industries that are rife with unique languages all of their own. On my first day at a large financial company, they handed me a binder with a list of over 300 acronyms that were used to describe internal teams and offerings. On more than one occasion, I saw these acronyms pop up in our customer-facing materials where they would mean absolutely nothing to the user. Unfortunately, our internal terminology can sometimes slip into the software. It's the writer's job to make sure this doesn't happen. The user doesn't work here. The user is not our coworker. As we've said, we have to use the user's language. This also applies to our industry jargon, buzzwords, or other terminology that maybe we understand, but doesn't add any value for the user. In fact, users hate jargon. It's confusing and it's off-putting and it often says nothing at all. Remember, we're writing software for the user only. Not for us, not for the executive team, and not for our clients. Copy in the software is for the user only. Now, if you're writing enterprise software, it may be okay to include the user's organization's internal terminology because that's language the user understands. It doesn't deviate from this guideline because it's still writing only for the user. Here's a little tip for this guideline. We're often tempted to ask coworkers for feedback after we write or design, and collaboration is essential. But we need to change the way we do it. When you ask coworkers for feedback, don't ask, what do you think about this copy? Instead, think about your persona. If your user persona is named Amanda, for example, you should ask your coworker, what do you think Amanda would think about this copy? Would Amanda like this copy? Thinking like that helps put the entire team in the right mindset that we're creating software for our user and not for us. So that's our first set of guidelines. Tune in to the next class for the rest.